Good evening, this is Doc Severson for the Theo Knight Report for Tuesday, September 26. You know, as we look across the major indices here, starting with the S&P, the S&P is going nowhere. We can see why, because of this daily exhaustion. But we're also seeing the same kind of thing as we go out to the Dow. The Dow is showing exactly the same thing. Exhaustion here, it's going nowhere for the past few days. And even the vaunted NASDAQ, if we look at the NASDAQ futures out here, have been going essentially nowhere for several weeks and actually have been pulling back pretty hard based on some of the usual suspects like Facebook, Apple, Google, and Amazon all pulling back pretty hard these days. Well, if we have this going on, why is the S&P still staying in one place? And what on earth is happening to the Russell? The Russell's blowing into all-time new highs on this V bottom that we've seen. So what's the story here? What What's moving? Where is the money moving to with these fund managers getting into these obviously more illiquid stocks that are driving growth here? Well, if we go out to our market watch here and pick up the heat map for once and go into the Russell 2000. And what we can see in the Russell 2000 is we can see the different sectors here, such as financials, information technology, healthcare, industrials, consumer discretionary, energy, consumer staples, utilities, materials. So these are kind of like the S&P 500 sectors that are out there, even the telecommunications over here. And we can see that in the Russell, the very largest ones are the financials. And notice how much green is in here, as well as energy. Notice also how green energy is these days. So let's drill into those with the S&P 500 ETFs for these. So XLF for the financials. What we're seeing is a very strong rally off of one of the first indices or first ETFs, actually part of the S&P 500, to retest the 200-day moving average. So I don't spend a whole lot of time watching the 200-day moving average, but when the price does reach down and test slightly under that and then rebound like crazy the next day, we have to pay attention to those things. Also note that the daily chart right now is in exhaustion. Very unlikely for this to do really anything else at this point with the price right up against all-time highs. Or I shouldn't say all-time highs, but recent highs. So there is some fair amount of resistance up here. But you can see that the XLF still has plenty of room to grow to get back to the pre-crash pricing of just over 30 bucks a share. Now, I went through all of the S&P 500 sectors about a week ago, and I examined each one of them, and by far the one that has been beat up the most is energy. And this is also the one that shows the most promise here, because just from a price perspective, what we have is we have since 2014, we've had this monthly downtrend. Even this is just another lower high setting up here. But what do we have here? This is potentially a higher low. Now, we won't know if this gonna, is going to get cleared until this basically breaks outside of the top of this box, which is a very large decision box, so anything can happen inside of here. In fact, what would actually be good is for it to come down here and then print a higher low on the weekly chart, because that would once again trap a lot of shorts on the way back up again. But you can see as part of the Russell, a lot of these small energy companies are part of that Russell. So when we look at the XLE, this is just, of course, in the S&P 500. But same kind of thing applies. All those little energy companies are getting a bid right now. And this is one of the reasons, apart from financials, as to why the Russell is starting to power higher. So as far as the XLE, or for that matter, just about anything that's in that sector, watch for the collective higher low to be printed here that could be a big opportunity right now this move is over because right now it's showing exhaustion down here but this will clear very quickly and actually if it does pull right back down this is actually the very fastest way to be able to recharge a chart otherwise expecting to see this thing flag out or set up a little horizontal box consolidation in this area could do exactly the same thing as well too. You can also see the 200-day moving average overhead now. So it's on the other side of the 200-day moving average. We'll see whether or not some consolidation and a breakout above there can lead to 
perhaps a lot of potential for this sector once again. That is it for tonight's report, folks. Thanks for listening. We'll see you tomorrow.